Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about how to paint a bathtub, and we'd like to thank Gail Torres for liking and sharing the podcast. The National Association of Home Builders says 72% of first-time home buyers want a shower-tub combo. Mm -hmm. Caldwell Banker Real Estate says a tub-shower combo is a feature that families with small children or older adults look for. So rather than removing an old tub and installing a shower, you can refinish a tub to improve its look, especially if you're fixing up your home to sell. Right. Can all types of bathtubs be painted? Yeah, the most popular bathtub refinishing kits will work with most types of bathtubs. What are the most common materials a bathtub is made out of? Acrylic, fiberglass, and porcelain enameled steel or cast iron. What type of paint would you use to paint a bathtub? Two-part resin-based paints and two-part epoxies are common in bathtub refinishing kits, but the formulas can vary, so read the instructions to get the best results. Okay. How do you clean a bathtub before painting it? You want to scrub the surfaces thoroughly to remove soap scum and any debris stuck to the surface so the coating bonds properly to the material. BobVila.com recommends washing a bathtub with a 10% bleach and water solution first, rinse it well, then use an abrasive cleaner like Comet or Soft Scrub. Then rinse it thoroughly again and wipe the surfaces down with acetone to remove any remaining grease or other residue. A few reviewers recommended using a lime cleaner to remove mineral deposits. And when you're working with products like bleach or acetone, you need good ventilation. But check the instructions for the product you're using. You need to be careful with cleaners you are using to clean the bathtub. Right. Some chemicals, if mixed, can be deadly. Yeah, you'd never want to mix bleach with ammonia, acids, or other cleaners. If you mix bleach with some common cleaning products, it can cause serious injuries. Mm -hmm. So always read the label before using a cleaning product. Bleach and vinegar creates a gas that can lead to coughing, breathing problems, burning, and watery eyes. Bleach and ammonia creates a gas that can cause shortness of breath, chest pain, and nausea. My grandma did that once. Yeah, it's scary. Scary, especially if you're in a small bathroom, a small area with not enough ventilation. Mm -hmm. Bleach and rubbing alcohol is toxic. Hydrogen peroxide and vinegar becomes highly corrosive, and it can irritate your skin, eyes, throat, and lungs. Scary. Yeah. Do you have to remove rust before painting the bathtub? Yes. If there's scratches or chips on a metal bathtub that have rusted, you need to sand off the rust and then fill and cover the area with a repair epoxy or filler. Make sure to wear an N95 or higher respirator whenever you're sanding surfaces. And in older homes, you need to be cautious of paint or coatings with lead in them. Lead was banned from paint since 1978, mm -hmm. but lead was still being used past that date in porcelain glazes for products like bathtubs. Huh. The Healthy Homes and Lead Safety Group says most manufacturers voluntarily stopped using lead but a few companies used lead in glazes for bathtubs as recently as 1995. Wow. And if you have a bathtub with lead in the glaze, the finish can wear or crack over time and allow lead to leach into the bathwater. That's not good. Yeah, if you have young children who are playing in bathwater and put their wet hands in their mouth or put toys in the bathtub and then put their wet hands in their mouth, they can ingest lead. And there's no safe level of lead exposure in children. Hmm. Even small amounts can cause damage that can last a lifetime. Scary. In children, lead can damage the brain and nervous system, slow growth and development, and cause behavioral problems. So if you have an older bathtub with a porcelain-coated finish, you should test it for lead. Okay. And refinishing a bathtub is one way to encapsulate that old finish and make the tub safer. If you're sanding a tub before refinishing it, Wet sand it to prevent dust from getting into the air and contaminating surfaces, and wear an N100 respirator. Okay. You can go to epa.gov forward slash lead, and then go to the tab that says lead safe renovations for DIYers, 
for tips about safely working with paint or glaze with lead in it. And you can get a lead test kit in a hardware store or a home center. Right. Do you have to repair chips in the bathtub before painting it? Yeah, they should be filled or sanded smooth and feathered before you paint it. What are some top-rated bathtub chip repair companies? Kramer Bath and Kitchen Finish Repair Kit is a two-part filler that works on cast iron, ceramic, porcelain, and acrylic surfaces. Kramer is C-R-A-M-E-R. Bathworks has a bathtub chip repair kit. This is a two-part filler that works on porcelain, steel, ceramic, plastic, and fiberglass. Rust-Oleum has a tub and tile chip repair kit. It's a two-part filler that's good for ceramic, fiberglass, porcelain, and acrylic surfaces. Make sure you're following the instructions for the cure time before you refinish the tub with any of these products. Some need a few days to cure before you paint over them. Hmm. What are the steps for painting a bathtub? I reviewed the instructions for three top-rated bathtub refinishing kits, Bathworks, Rust-Oleum, and Ecopel. Because I think it's interesting to compare the steps on products to see the differences and what's involved before you start a project like this. I think you need a hobby. Because <laughs> I don't think reading instructions is interesting. It sounds like work. <laughs> so for the Bathworks bathtub refinishing kit I looked at, it uses a two-part resin to coat the tub. They say it's more durable than epoxy. Hmm. And what's interesting is they don't recommend using a bath mat after refinishing a tub. They say it will eventually cut through the finish of any bathtub coating. Hmm. So they have a kit with a textured additive for a non-slip surface. They recommend if you want to use a bath mat, use one without suction cups and remove it after each use. They recommend a paint respirator and good ventilation when using the product. Their premium refinishing kit comes with a two-part coating, primer, cleaner, a tack cloth, gloves, a mixing container, a paint tray, roller cover and handle, a foam brush, 120 grit sandpaper, a non-slip additive, and a sponge roller. They recommend purchasing their Easy Etch Kit for cast iron, steel, and ceramic tubs, to degloss the surface for the best bond and durability. Hmm. The liquid products are flammable, so make sure you keep away from flames or sparks. Okay. What are the steps to use the Bathworks Bathtub Refinishing Kit? You want to scrub the tub with the cleaner that's included, or you can use Ajax or Comet with a Scotch-Brite pad or a sponge. Then use steel wool if needed to remove any buildup because any residue can prevent bonding and cause the product to fail. Hmm. Remove the old caulk, and then scrape down the bathtub with a single-edge razor blade. You want to rinse it well after scrubbing, and while the tub is damp, use the 120-grit sandpaper on the surface. Then you want to rinse it again. Cover the spout and shower head with a plastic bag to prevent any water from dripping into the tub. If you remove the spout, you can get a rubber cork at a hardware store and force it into the pipe for the spout to prevent dripping. Hmm. Use a blow dryer or a strong wet-dry vac to blow water out of the drain area and the corners. When the surfaces are completely dry, mask off the tub and the tub drain. Any moisture during the process can cause the coating to fail. Okay. Make any repairs to chipped areas and then sand the repair smooth. You want to follow the steps to the repair product and check the cure time. Once the tub is cleaned, sanded, and dry, wipe down with the tack cloth to remove any small particles. Okay. Wear disposable gloves and pour the primer onto a paper towel and wipe all the surfaces of the tub that you're going to be recoating and allow it to dry for five minutes. Hmm. You're going to mix part A and part B into the mixing container and mix it with a stirring stick for three minutes then let it set for five minutes. The pot life is two to three hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. What is pot life? It's how long you have to apply the product to the surface before it becomes unstable. Okay, back to the application steps. If you have the non-slip additive, you'll add some of the coating to the additive container and apply it to the center of the tub with the sponge roller, and then let it set up for about 10 minutes. Hmm. Pour the coating into the paint tray and use the brush to cover the edges and areas where the roller won't fit. So you should test the roller out before you start to see where it fits. Mm -hmm. 
Then use the roller and roll the inside of the tub, the tub edge, and then the front of the tub. You always want the roller cover loaded with the coating. You don't want to dry roll an area. Okay. A second coat should be applied right away. Then allow the coating to set up for 24 hours before you remove the masking tape. Hmm. Allow it to dry for 48 hours or longer before using the tub or exposing it to water. You want to recaulk the tub before using it and follow the instructions on the caulk for the drying time for that. Okay. What type of maintenance is required for the BathWorks product? To maintain the finish, the care instructions say to remove excess water and wipe down the tub after every use, and don't allow the spout or shower head to drip after using the tub. So if you have a continuous leak, you need to repair that? Right. You don't want to leave bottles, cans, or wet cloths on the surface for long periods, and never use hair dye in a refinished bathtub. Okay. What should we know about the Rust-Oleum Tub and Tile Kit? It's a two-part epoxy acrylic that works on ceramic, porcelain, fiberglass, and acrylic. It's not recommended for galvanized steel or flexible plastic. You want to clean the tub thoroughly first, remove any mold or mildew with a solution of bleach and water, rinse it, and then scrub the surfaces with an abrasive cleaner like Comet. Then rinse it with fresh water and allow it to dry. Okay. Then remove all the caulk and prepare the surface by using an abrasive pad and lime away. Rinse that, then sand all the surfaces with a 400 to 600 grit wet dry sandpaper, then rinse it again and allow it to dry. Then you're going to wipe off the surfaces with a tack cloth before painting to remove small dust particles. You want to do this project when the temperatures are between 50 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity level is below 85% to ensure proper drying. Okay. Adequate ventilation is required and wear a paint respirator. This has a very strong odor and high VOCs. Right. Mix part A and B and stir it for a minute. You want to apply this within six hours of mixing. And you can put it onto the tub with a brush or a roller. How do you apply it with a paintbrush? You want to use a good quality fine bristle varnish brush and brush it in one direction only for a smooth surface. Mm -hmm. You want to avoid excessive brushing to ensure that you have an even coat and a smooth finish. Apply two coats and wait at least an hour between coats. How do you apply it with a roller cover? You would use a high-quality quarter-inch short nap roller made for kitchen or bathrooms and apply two coats waiting at least an hour between coats. You can also use a conventional HVLP or airless sprayer. The epoxy acrylic can be thinned up to 10% with isopropyl alcohol. At 70 degrees and 50% humidity, the coating will self-level and eliminate small bubbles. And you want to allow the surface to dry for at least three days before exposing it to water. And you can clean up any spills with lacquer thinner or isopropyl alcohol. Okay. If you're doing a project like this and you're using a rag with solvents or oily products, you don't want to ball up the rag after you're done and throw it in your garage or in the trash. As some solvents dry and react with oxygen, it releases heat. And if the rag is balled up, it provides insulation that can cause the temperature to reach a point where it can spontaneously combust, which can be a fire hazard. Uh, yeah. The National Fire Protection Association says an average of 1,700 homes per year experience fires due to spontaneous combustion, and an average of 900 are caused by oily rags. It's crazy. How do you dispose of oily or solvent-soaked rags? In an outdoor area, you can spread out oily rags on a non-combustible surface in a single layer and then weigh them down so the wind doesn't blow them into a ball, mm -hmm. or you can hang them up to dry. And if you're reusing the rags, they can be stored in a metal container with a tight-fitting lid once they're fully dry. If you're throwing them away, you can spray them down with water after they're dry and then just throw them in the garbage. And you don't want to add oily or solvent-soaked rags to a compost pile. Right. Anything else about the Rust-Oleum kit? A few reviewers recommend purchasing a second kit and putting an additional coat on for better coverage and durability. One blogger said they poured the Rust-Oleum tub epoxy in a plastic cup and it dissolved the plastic. 
So they recommend keeping it in the original container. <laughs> Another blogger recommends using tub cast primer for kits without a primer, and Ecopel recommends it. And tub cast is T U B capital C A S T. Cool. What should we know about the Ecopel tub kit? This is a two part epoxy that's poured onto the tub, so a little different approach. Hmm. And it could be used on solid acrylic, fiberglass, steel, cast iron, and porcelain tubs. It can also be used on previously painted bathtubs. Huh. The company says it's odor-free and low VOC. It's nice. The bathroom should be 75 degrees Fahrenheit for a minimum of 12 hours before the project. Repair any chips with an auto body filler. Sand down and smooth peeling paint. And they say a paint stripper can be used to remove previously applied paint. But be careful with paint removers. The CDC says at least 14 workers have died since 2000 as a result of using stripping agents during bathtub refinishing. Hmm. You need adequate ventilation and you should wear a chemical respirator whenever you're working with harsh chemicals. You want to remove all the caulk or silicone and wipe down the tub edges with isopropyl alcohol. They want you to scrub the tub with Lysol Power Toilet Bowl Cleaner. And the active ingredient is hydrochloric acid. So you need good ventilation, eye protection, and chemical-resistant gloves. Don't mix toilet bowl cleaner with bleach. It creates chlorine gas. Even at low levels, it creates breathing problems, eye, nose, and throat irritation. At high levels, it can be deadly. Yeah. Rinse off the tub thoroughly and then dry it with a blow dryer or heat gun. Tape off the surrounding surfaces. Tape off the floor with plastic. Remove the overflow cover or cover it with masking tape. Tape off the drain and cover it with masking tape. You want to mix part A and part B and then stir it for at least 10 minutes. Then let it set for 5 minutes. Then mix it for another 2 to 3 minutes. Hmm. Fun. Fill a plastic cup with the product and start pouring it onto the top of the back and the sides and allow it to flow down the sides to the bottom of the tub. You're going to use a plastic scraper to scoop the excess material back into the mixing container. Use a foam roller to smooth the coating on the top rail and move the excess down the sides. Okay. Use the roller on the back wall and the sides to uniformly cover the surfaces, and when the back and sides are fully covered and uniform, pour the remaining coating onto the front rail and use the roller to push the material to flow down the inside and outside tub walls. You're going to scoop up the extra product and re-pour if needed on the front walls to cover the surfaces uniformly. You can remove the excess product from the bottom of the tub, and after you do that, you can remove the tape from the walls and use a heat gun or hair dryer to pop any bubbles. Hmm. Hourly, you're going to scoop up or wipe the excess material off the drain area. When the material stops moving down to the drain, then you can remove the remaining tape. And this can take four to six hours. Hmm. You want to wait 24 to 36 hours before using the tub. Okay. And then they also have a roll-on kit if pouring out the coating and scooping it seems too complex. Right. A common recommendation I saw in reviews was to watch the Ecopel videos and follow them completely for the best results. All right. Ecopel says their pour-on system gives you a coating that's 20 times thicker than a spray-on coating, and if you prep the tub properly, it could last up to 20 years. Wow. And that's the key to any coating. You want to clean and prep the surface properly. Right. Don't skip any steps. Yeah. How do you clean and maintain a painted bathtub? The Spruce says most refinishing companies and DIY tub manufacturers Agree on a few commercial cleaners that are safe to use on a refinished tub. Scrubbing bubbles, Formula 409 without bleach, Lysol Basin Tub and Tile Cleaner, or a gentle liquid dish soap like Dawn, Palmolive, or Ajax dish soap. Don't use any powdered or abrasive cleaners or rough pads like Scotch-Brite pads or steel wool or sponges with an abrasive side. Hmm. Don't use Barkeeper's Friend, Ammonia, or Bleach on painted bathtubs. Some products labeled soft or cream cleaners that are labeled soft can also damage refinished tubs. Interesting. Don't steam clean or power wash a refinished tub. 
and check the cleaning and maintenance recommendations for the product you're using. And even if you've used a similar product in the past, the ingredients can change over time, which is also a good practice before you use a product too, because the application steps can change. Right. Who would power wash a tub? <laughs> Somebody who wants a very clean tub. So a man? <laughs> What if you don't have an exhaust fan or adequate ventilation when painting a bathtub? You can tape up plastic over the doorway and then cut an opening on the bottom for a box fan and cut X slits on the top for fresh air exchange. Okay. You can use a roll of plastic and tape the long ends together with packing tape to create a duct. Then you tape one end of that duct around the fan, face the fan away from the bathroom so it's blowing out, and extend that duct out of a window or a doorway to the outside. And this is how we vented overspray and odor out of homes when I worked for a spray paint company. Cool. You can also cut out that section for air exchange and tape up a low MERV pleated furnace filter. And that way it's going to help block dust from getting into the room where you're working. MERV means minimum efficiency rating value. Right. Yeah, for a project like this, you'd want a low MERV, so around a 5 is good for airflow. Okay. You can also use a dust barrier system like Zipwall or Reusip to help control odor and still have access to the area. Zipwall is Z-I-P-W-A-L-L, -L, and Reusip is R-E-U-Z-I-P. Cool. Do you have anything else to add? Study the instructions before you start your project for your product. Clean and prep your tub thoroughly for a durable finish. Make sure you're masking off the surfaces around your tub and covering your floor as well. I really like rolls of masking paper and taping them up. Right. It does a nice job. And schedule this type of project when you can leave windows open and have plenty of ventilation. For most products, you're going to have odor for quite a few days. Okay. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 18 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com, and you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.